All right, everybody, today we're going to get a little bit of a teaser on my new fish, but this is going to be a very important video, so I want you to pay attention. I do have some fish in quarantine right now. That's the tank on the bottom there that we're doing a water change on, and we're doing a water change for a very good reason. I'm going to show you uh, some test results of the water here in a moment, and we will talk about why we're looking at them. I really don't want to spend too much time looking at the tank because I don't want anybody to actually see what's in there. Uh, I do want it to still be a secret, and that's why we're standing so far away. So let's go look at some colored vials, and we will talk about why we are looking at those colored vials. All right, everybody. For those of you who are not familiar with these colors just off the top of your head, uh, the vial on the right is a test for nitrites, and the vial on the left is a test for ammonia. Uh, there is actually a little bit of ammonia showing up. I know it looks nice and yellow, but there is actually a little bit of a green tint to it. It was just enough to cause a color change, not really to uh, move it up to the next color. But that is indicating there is some ammonia in the tank. The purple vial, however, is much more significant. That is showing uh, at least one part per million of nitrite. And that may not sound like much, but nitrite is deadly to your fish, and I do not like to ever see a full one part per million in any of my tanks, um, let alone one that has new sensitive fish in it. So why am I getting ammonia and nitrite showing up in a tank that is an established quarantine tank that sits up and running uh, for this purpose? It's there for me to put fish in when I bring them home from the store and quarantine them. So why am I seeing ammonia and nitrite show up? Rather than have you sit here and look at this vial for the next five minutes, we're going to go in and we're going to look at my Garami tank uh, because that is the next tank I'm going to be working on today. There's your little teaser for that. Uh, i got some stuff I'm going to be doing with the lighting and just a big uh, tank overhaul. Uh, so we're going to go look at that and we're going to talk about this and why I've got ammonia and nitrite showing up in my um, quarantine tank. So sit tight and give me one second to get set up in the other room and we will finish this discussion. All right, here we are at my Garami tank, and as you can see, it is in need of some maintenance. Got to get in there, and I got to do some green removal today. Going to get a lot of that uh, stuff out of there. So why am I getting these ammonia and nitrite readings on a tank that is an established quarantine tank that sits up and running regularly? Well, it's because of something I always talk about, and that is the fact that you have to treat your nitrifying bacteria as though it is an inhabitant of your tank. Um, you just you, That's the long and short of it. You simply have to think about it as though it's an animal that lives in your tank. And in doing such, you need to make sure it gets what it needs to live, uh, like food, for example. Now, a quarantine tank that sits up and running all the time is not a tank that's producing ammonia. I'm not putting fish food in there. I don't have any animals living in it that are producing waste. Um, so regardless of the fact that that was an established tank, the cultures in there were absolutely bare minimum amount of cultures and would have been fine if I was simply quarantining um, a quarry or a couple of skirt tetras or you know half a dozen neons or something like that. I have three significant sized fish in there and they're producing a fair whack of bio load um, in a small 10 gallon tank. So despite the fact that it's an established tank, it's not well enough established to handle that heavy of a bio load. So I have been checking very closely, um, looking for any change in that tank. Uh, the first 24 hours the fish were in there, I checked about every 12 hours for maybe the first 18, I should say. Um, I mean, for the first uh, 36, I should say, where I did three tests every 12 hours apart. And everything was showing fine and normal as of last night when I went to bed. When I got up this morning, I noticed that the water looked a little off. Now, I don't know how to explain that other than years of experience, and I can just look at that water, and it looked a little funny to me. I don't, again, I don't really know how to explain what I mean by it looked funny, but it looked funny enough to me that I immediately went and checked the water, um, and sure enough, I was showing a significant amount of nitrites. So overnight, I went from not having any in that tank to I'm now suddenly producing one part per million of nitrites. And I was able to get in there and do a water change, and I've brought the uh, level down to under a quarter part per million. Um, unfortunately, there's just going to be some nitrite in the tank. I can't just continually do water changes all day, every day. Um, and that's uh, you know pretty much what I would have to do. So what I need to do now is just stay on top of that tank, and every 12 hours or so I need to check it, and if those nitrites are starting to build up and they get above one half of a part per million, that is 0.5 parts per million, I will be in there doing a water change. 
take nitrites very seriously, people. They will kill your animals. Um, so that's the long and short of it. If you've got a quarantine tank and you've got it set up and established and you bring fish home, you are not free and clear. You cannot just put those fish in that QT and walk away as though they've gone into your tank. Um, keep an eye on those nitrite and ammonia levels because you've now just changed the bio load in that tank. You have to think about that quarantine tank as you would any other tank. And any other tank that you dramatically change the bio load, and when you go from zero bio load to any bio load, that's a pretty dramatic change. In my case, I went from zero bio load to a fairly significant bio load, probably, you know, uh, a full bio load for a 10 gallon tank regardless, you know, and I went from nothing to that. So I sort of expected this to happen and I was looking for it right from the beginning. Um, but somebody else may not be. So I just want that to be understood that when you bring fish home and you put them in your quarantine tank, you have now put new fish into a tank that's changed the bio load and you need to go back to square one uh the stuff you learned on day one in the aquarium hobby of checking your water check your water check your water uh always check your water make sure whenever you've put new fish into water uh, whenever you've made any kind of change to a tank whether it's your qt or it's one of your show tanks any change start checking your water and make sure you didn't affect something and shift something so there you have it. My QT is cycling in again because I have new fish in it. So stay tuned for those, uh, the big reveal on them. And uh, stay tuned for a video about all of the work I'm getting ready to do on this tank. I'm changing the lighting over today. I'm changing the hoods over. And I'm going to get in there and do a major water change and cleaning and scrub down and plant removal, etc., etc. So big video on that coming up today, too. Uh, so if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and do so. You don't want to miss anything. So thanks for watching this one. I hope that helps somebody. And I will see you real soon on the next one.